My name's Bev Green, I'm Head of Partnerships for the University of the West of England. I've got three seconds to do this, so it's great to see everybody here, it's great to see our learners supported, and it's great to see that the Ambitions event is getting bigger and better every year. Thank you very much for coming. We really, really do appreciate it. Um, I'm Lloyd Harris. I work for the Kingdoms Partnership. I'm one of the team of people um, who are uh, organising this year's Ambitions event. Um, we've got a plan for this afternoon. Um, we think that we'll need around about half an hour, 35 minutes, to provide basic information um, and a bit of context uh, about the, the Ambitions event. Um, after that, it's a case of uh, if you have particular needs or you want to discuss your requirements for the day or any issues at all, any questions, um, then you'll be able to talk to one of our highly trained members of staff who are dotted around the place and are wearing badges that look a bit like that. So you'll be able to spot those people um, uh, as, at the same time as getting another t uh, cup of tea or coffee if you need to. So, um, uh, the <coughs> Ambitions event this year, it's bigger and better than before, we think. Um, it's different also in the sense that uh, the two partnerships that are involved in organising it, that's the Concord Partnership of Schools and the Kingswood Partnership of Schools, are collaborating on it uh, to make sure that we get the best out of it and also, you know, sign of the times, save some money, hopefully, as well. Um, uh, the logos on the bottom there, if you can strain your eyes, give you a bit of an indication of who's involved. Uh, both the partnerships... The University of the West of England, who are supporting it in all sorts of ways, including financially. Uh, the local authority, South Gloucestershire local authority as well. Both partnerships, the Concord and Kingswood partnerships, are determined and have made, I think, public statements about the uh, keenness to maintain uh, a, a broad curriculum, a diverse curriculum that includes work relevant learning and includes work experience and includes things that we know will be applicable to a wide range of students, not just a particular group that might be suited to uh, academic education or whatever it might be. Um, we're also committed to providing high quality support for students making those decisions. So we're saying we really do want to make sure that we maintain the levels that we've had over the last few years and we want to build on those things and make sure that students get the best possible level of support set up the day before and we're open from about 3 o'clock until 6 p.m. Uh, for you to set up. That's the layout. Now um, the little the, the blue um, and red stands are actually four by four meters. We um, recommend that you come between 7 and 8.30 on, on the Wednesday if you're exhibiting on the Wednesday. Um, we open from 7 o'clock. Traffic does get a bit tight uh, from about 8 o'clock onwards. That's lovely. Those of you who aren't already experts on this, give you a little bit of uh, an insight into the sorts of things that we know from the past work in relation to the nature of the workshops and the, the likely or the sorts of things that you might think about doing. I would recommend that what you do is get straight involved, in, uh, if, if at all possible, in an interactive, interactive activity. Something that will provide some sort of insight into the nature of the work uh, that is involved in your organisation and in the sector that you're, you're within. So you might have some sort of discussion. If there's something that you can focus on um, that's relevant to your organisation uh, that students might uh, understand, again, reminding you that these are 13, 14 year olds, um, and have some sort of discussion or debate of, uh, of some sort. Um, if you've got specialist equipment or you use particular things that can, uh, be, uh, with a bit of dressing up, it always seems to go down extremely well. You know, whether it's uh, in relation to health or whether it's, uh, you know, the dressing up in police riot gear or whatever it might be, those sorts of things usually are relatively effective. They cause a bit of a stir and students get to laugh at the other people there that they dress up. Um, they might try something new. It might be something unusual that you can provide, something that's outside of their likely experience already, and uh, get them involved in, in, in doing something on that front. Um, using artefacts of some sort. If you've got anything at all that uh, is specific to 
the nature of your work or your organisation, you know, having something tangible there to explore and think about and discuss is always a really good idea. Um, you can blind them with science or technology. Uh, that's usually quite effective. Um, you might put on some sort of demonstration. If that's relevant to the sort of work that you do, again, those sorts of things are relatively involving for the students. Uh, it's a bit more dressing up this time around. I decided to call it a simulation because it seemed to make a difference from the other one, but essentially it's the same thing. Um, stuff with a high visual impact is always a good idea. Um, getting students to, uh, to do something, getting involved and having a go at something, uh, however small and however uh, relatively slight in relation to what you do, I always think is a, a, is a really good idea. Um, you might be able to put something together that involves a guessing game of some sort and leads in the direction of some further understanding about the nature of work in that particular um, sector. Quizzes are always good for a laugh. You might have something there that um, would work well. Uh, learning a new skill. These people were uh, teaching uh, some uh, foreign language or something. I'm not quite sure what. Bev recognises it, so it must be true. Um, but uh, learning some sort of new skill that's relevant to your organisation or that particular area of work is always a really, really good idea. Um, and then, uh, if all else fails, there's always bribery to fall back on. Um, if you've got free gifts or anything like that, that often goes down well. Um, uh, if it's edible, all the better. What I'm going to do now uh, is hand over to Lucy from Noma, um, because she's an expert, I'm building you up now, uh, an expert at uh, doing interactive workshops. Uh, I think this is it taking place, isn't it? So, um, <coughs> I've got a few photographs, and, and I think we've forced you into saying a few words about what you did last time. Last year was actually the first time we did this sort of event. Um, we've done a couple of other things with the children, semi-interactive workshops, but we didn't want to put too much planning into what we actually did because architecture, which is where I think Roma Architects, is what we do. Um, but we, I don't know, it tends to be a bit more organic and a bit more fluid, and I think the worst thing you could do is over to a pay for something like this. Um, sort of with, you know, being a student myself, the worst thing you could do is sit down in the lecture and sort of switch off. And what we tried to do is, um, I don't know if any of you saw our event last year, what we did, but we got a load of scrap and we actually gave children job roles to work with, so like we assigned some as architects, some as planners, some as structural engineers, and we gave them 10 minutes to build a seating enclosure to sit in that we could then talk to them within. So they sort of had a description of um, what each job role would do, so like the architect would have to design the seating enclosure and the quantity of the and the chairs they used, and structural engineers were in charge of making it stand upright so they the chairs and the tables and things like that. So what we actually did then is when the children were sat within what they just built, we just told them basically that actually we've just done what we do on a daily basis. And then we work with other professionals who sort of in charge of helping sort of cheer the team and make sure the building gets done and things like that. And they seemed to respond um, quite well to it. It gave them <coughs> something that done design and architecture wasn't necessarily for them, and especially when we did that kind of degree phase. But this way they've got a taste of sort of engineering as well and planning and we found it quite useful to just sort of explain the other disciplines that we worked with, which was quite a good way of you know, sort of let them know that as well as design there is other aspects they can learn from. We found that a lot of students sort of I don't know, they tend to think that our job was something completely different from what it was, so it was good that they had a taste of other disciplines. So I don't know if there's a way that you can incorporate other parts of your sector into what you do. But, one thing that's worth pointing out, in the time that we spent talking to you now, you would have done two workshops with year nine students. So uh, it's not a very long time, and if you're doing something uh, active and involving, by the time those students have come in, you've introduced yourself or done whatever it is you need to get the thing rolling, and you need to allow a little bit of time at the end to unravel a bit, and figure out what happened and ensure that students are ready to go to their next workshop, it's not a very long time.